There's not like a game of cricket. I loved to play it as a kid. I was a pretty decent batsman at youth level. Got picked up by Worcestershire and always used to watch the test matches with me granddad. He was the cricket mad one of the family and the one who used to take me places to play. I obviously always wanted to be a footballer growing up, but the only team that would have me was a youth one run by a local vicar, one that didn't even play in any official youth leagues. It was uh, just a couple of blokes bringing some kids down the park to kick a ball around. The standard was awful, and I was a drab footy player. Now, talk about Accrington Stanley. I wouldn't have made Cradley Town's team in the lowest tier of English footy, but cricket... I could smack a ball round better than most and had the knackers to even brave fast bowlers. I used to love smacking them for four or six, even if I was very inconsistent and would sometimes be clean bowled for low numbers. But catch me on a good day's innings and you'd know about it. Anyway, my cricket career got shunted early due to injuries in my arm, but I maintained a TV presence with the sport in my day it was Atherton, Stuart, Hussain, Goff, Hick, a cracking bloke who used to love me batting style and give me a few good words as a kid. And Tufnell, of course. Uh, rivals, obviously, were the Aussies. Pontin, War, McGrath, Warney. My youth was basically spent watching those win the Ashes. I had to wait until I was in my mid-twenties to finally see the 2005 victory. And what a test that was, seeing... Jonesy dropped that fast reverse swing was something spectacular. I wouldn't have liked to have go against that, but one thing I wish existed when I was younger was 2020 cricket. 20 overs to smack as many runs as possible. That's right up my street. We tended to do 10 to 30 as kids. Would depend if it was an after school game or weekend one. Those short games were where I would excel and this game right here captured those shorter over games perfectly, shrinking your playtime down and creating one of the best experiences of the great game of the tabletop. This is Cricket the Game, and I've given it 4 out of 5. So, Cricket is a game of two innings, or halves if you like. One team steps up to the crease with two batsmen, and the other feet team fields. You have nine fielders around the field ready to catch or stop the ball. One wicket keeper who sits by the backer's wicket, ready to either catch the ball or knock over the stumps if the batsman a reach the crease or his foot is off it. And lastly, you have the bowler for the over who runs with the ball and bowls it at the batsman who can either hit it or miss it. The bowlers have a variety of styles in real life, but only three are represented here in this game. Fast bowlers, spin bowlers and medium pace bowlers who represent all-rounders to some degree. Not greatly, I would say, as this is just a board game for simplicity and speed slash ease of play with your choosing a delivery style, be it swinger, art swinger, bouncer, that sort of thing. And once you flip over your delivery card you'll match it to the batter's mark now batting in real life there's many thoughts that would go through your head when you're standing at that crease what delivery is the bowler going to do whereabouts are you trying to hit it is it coming in faster slower is the bounce going to be early to catch you off guard or even aimed at your head batting a easy but here it is simplified by just placing your ball token on one of the five zones in the field and then you match it up to the zones on the bowler's card up in your confidence to max if you guessed correctly or minus in it one off the confidence for each zone you've guessed wrong now specialized batsmen call ever go below the dot which is no advantage to the roll but other batsmen lower down the pecking order not only roll a d6 to hit the ball rather than a d8 but also, if they go lower down the advantage track, you give the bowlers a plus one to their roll. And let's make no bones about it, you're going to be rolling a ton of dice in this game. This is straight up dice cricket with a few specialised cards. I call it basically advanced dice cricket. See, you roll for basically everything in this game. Roll for the bowl and the hit. Roll to see if you bowl someone out if they miss or... It catches them in the slips. Roll for the hit. 
If the butter beats the boulders, roll and smacks it. Roll for distance and aggression based on your stance. Basically, it is in the air or on the floor. Roll for a run out, roll for a catch. And you do that basically every ball delivery. There's so much rolling in this game. It feels like Limp Biscuit will start singing and The Undertaker will emerge from a curtain on a bike. The only time you do roll dice is during the express play, which happens during the 2nd and ninth overs. During T20 games or between the 2nd and 19th overs if you're playing T20s. Express play sees you turning over the first two cards in the round and you can either get runs or advantages on the dice in some way for the bowler. Now, the over cards are a brilliant bit of design work by Zero Point Games. Basically, every bowler has two decks of cards. One is the ball delivery option, the other is the specific over card for the three styles. At the start of the over, you'll place six of the cards down at the bottom of the board and you'll flip them over as you get to deliver the ball. They can provide benefits or detriments to the ball delivery. Some could be no balls which give a free run and a free delivery which could lead to more runs. Some could be great catches which could see you catching the ball on a 4 plus roll. Some could give the bowler the chance to roll a d8 instead of the usual d6 or some feature a little volume symbol that could lead to nicks on a miss which could be caught in the slip. The overcards really do elevate this game above a standard game of dice cricket and for me make it sensational. They really add to the immersion of a real game of cricket happening, getting a good line of length along with causing the batsman to guess wrong and you get disadvantages which really do come across strong so long as you roll well and you can enhance those chances with skill cards that are a one-time use per over these cards usually give advantages to the batter or bowler whenever you use them batsmen can only use them once per innings unlike the bowlers but they do get access to re-rolls and you'll be using them quite often believe me depending on your luck with dice and that's really it for the gameplay it's cricket and it's a great rendition of it so what don't I like? That's probably the best place to start. Well, as a solo only player, I was slightly disappointed to see the solo rules as a free download off the Zero Point Games website. I would have liked a separate book specifically for solo play, if only for a full colour section for their AI fielder placement, depending on coin flip and bowling style, along with which over is taking place. I only have access to black and white printers, so when I printed my solo rulebook off, the colours all look similar, and so you kind of have to guess which one could be the correct one. But the rest of the solo rules are great, and of course it being free for everyone means it's easily accessible. I just like being greedy and would have preferred another book printed in the box. But the solo rules cover every aspect of the game with an AI opponent. You do sometimes have to flip a coin which is in the box to see what it will do at certain points like field in position. But it gets more aggressive when it starts to do well by hitting boundaries or sixes. And it's very hard to guess which delivery they will do when bowling as you have to shuffle the ball cards before every delivery. Yes, I've yet to lose to the AI. There's nothing really here to up the difficulty in a regular game of T10s or T20s. As it's just like playing against another bloke. You're just rolling both sets of dice consistently but there are also six solo specific scenarios with three levels of difficulty to them which means the challenges like scores to beat or taking out your opponents before they reach a specific number of runs or overs become way more challenging along with the earlier scenarios easing you into the gameplay. In terms of gameplay though I only have one real complaint and that's the catching aspect. My thoughts a changed since the prototype. I said there I believe catches should be on fives and sixes with them coming down to fours in red zones and threes with a great 
catch over card even young cricketers catch the ball more often than not when it comes in their general direction and it would change up your tactics with regards to batting stances because at the moment there's not much stopping you from really just belting the ball aggressive and hoping your luck holds out as outside a great catch it's quite difficult to be caught or even run out since they only happen on sixes more often than not if a six is rolled you just give a shrug of the shoulders and smirk knowing luck war with you for that one because it really do happen all that much with my last issue and it's not a bad one as even i don't have answers for it is the fact that this game like any other cricket game be it tabletop or digital is more bowling focused everything is weighted towards the bowlers they dictate the spin they dictate the over cards that help them more so than the batters they can use skill cards every over it's probably just the batsman in me but i'm yet to play a game that truly gives but in its due here it's a different dice based on skill of the batter you get two stances of which you basically almost always go aggressive and you can pick one of the five zones and hope for the best on a roll even brian lara cricket on playstation one used to just be a pick a direction and hope for the best it's a very minor nitpick i have with all cricket media being a batter never really a bowler and i just feel your core get inside the head of what a batter is feeling and shot selection but that's all i've got for the negatives other than personal play time to this you're looking at an hour and a half to two hours for two innings of t10 which is a 10 over game with both sides batting and bowling along with three to four hours for a t20 as a solo only guy i really feel t10 is your best bet rolling the dice 120 or more times for both innings is enough for me i will play the occasional t20 the board is more expansive then and so fielding and higher numbers on rolls is needed a lot more you do tend to think about your batter's stance more often but you're taking 240 rolls of dice and i found doing it in one solo sitting with distractions around me to be detrimental when I've played a T20 game recently, I played the batsman the one day and then bolt the next, containing it to two sessions and breaking it up helped me a lot for my mind's ability to keep track of everything going on. You core really miss much. The rules flow easily with booth rule books are presented really well in such a small package with chapters to lay out exactly what you're looking at after several plays on pretty much capable of playing this without even looking at the book and that's a huge positive for the system the components are top notch you get a scoreboard three teams one of which is female cardboard tokens and no faff i honestly couldn't believe how small this box actually was when i first received it and it all goes back in with room to spare so long as you bag everything up i have honestly had a great time with this game and a t10 is perfect for a lazy sunday afternoon when you've munched on your dinner i'm definitely keeping me copy it will sit proudly on my shelf and be played quite often i feel i really do recommend this game to cricket fans who would like the best adaption of the beautiful game on the tabletop regardless of my personal biases which i can house rule especially as a solo player cricket easily earns it's four out of five rating i really recommend visiting the zero point games website and picking a copy up so with that thanks for watching and tatty bye